crystal preamps and explosive dynamic range, that's how M-Audio advertises the Air 192 for. But what does that really mean? Let's put the interface to the test. Hey, Julian Krauss here, and before we dive into a full audio quality analysis, let's check out the hardware and the build quality of the Air 192 4. On the front of the interface, you can find an instrument input. Just FYI, this input cannot be switched to a line level input. For that, you have to use the mic slash line level input on the back. But you only get one of these, so with the Air 4, you cannot connect the line and a mic source simultaneously. If you want that, you have to step up to the Air 192 6. On the front you can also find a switch to toggle the phantom power for the mic input, and you also got a quarter inch headphone jack. On the back you will find a Kensington locking point and a USB Type-C connector below that. I want to point out that the Air ships with both a USB-C to USB-A and a USB-C to USB-C cable. So regardless of which connection type your PC uses, you will have the right cable to quickly set up the interface, which I think is quite nice. You also get two balanced quarter-inch TRS outputs to connect your monitors to and an XLR and TRS combo input where the XLR in is used as a microphone input and the TRS as a line level input. On the top of the interface you can find all the controls and starting on the left you got your gain knob to control the gain for the mic and line combo input. Next to it you can find a second knob which controls the gain for the instrument input. For both inputs you get an LED level meter, which is sadly not as granular as I would have hoped for. Yes, you can roughly set your gain with them, but I always ended up using the meter in my DAW to fine tune my gain settings. So I think the level meters are mostly designed for a quick check to see if your levels are still okay, but they are not that useful to precisely set your gain. On the top right you got two more knobs. One lets you fine tune the amount of audio you will hear from your DAW, or the direct audio from your input. And the other one is a volume knob for your headphones. Lastly, the Air features a massive knob in the middle, which sets the volume of your main outputs on the back. To be honest, when I first looked at some pictures of the M-Audio Air, it looked like it's an all-plastic build. But that's actually not true. Yes, the top cover and the knobs are mainly plastic, but the rest of the housing is made out of metal. This gives the Air some amount of heft and makes it feel quite solid. Even though the knobs are out of plastic, they still feel solid and they turn smoothly. You might have noticed that the Air is a bit bigger than your typical audio interface and this does mean that it takes up more space on your desk. But at the same time it makes it very easy to access all the buttons and knobs. Ok, let's check out some specifications of the Air 192.4 and see how it really performs. As the name Air 192 implies, the maximum sample rate of the interface is 192 kHz. This means that the frequency response should extend quite high, well outside the range of human hearing. And that's exactly what it does. I measured the frequency response of the mic input and this is what the graph looks like. In the important range from 20 to 30,000 Hz, the response looks very good, only dropping off about 1 dB at 20 Hz. In the higher frequencies, the minus 3 dB point is around 65 kHz. All in all, a pretty flat response. Frequency response is of course not the only important part of a microphone input. The distortion performance also plays a big role in the perceived audio quality, and I'm happy to report that the mic input has very low distortion components, which usually sit around 100 dB below the 1K stimulus signal. This results in a total harmonic distortion of minus 93 decibels, and that amount of distortion is arguably inaudible. If you are interested, I also made some intermodulation measurements. This shows the amount of distortion that is introduced by one tone modulating another one. Without going into too much detail here, these graphs also show a very good performance, as all the distortion components are very low as well. One more quality criterion of a microphone input is the dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the strongest signal the interface can capture and the lowest signal, which is dictated by its noise floor. Ideally, you want the dynamic range to be as high as possible, because this way you can leave yourself more headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. The dynamic range of my particular unit is exactly 103 decibels A weighted. While this isn't bad by any means, with this amount of dynamic range, 
the Air 192 is only on par with a Steinberg UR22C, and in total it's a bit on the lower end of the scale compared to other interfaces. So I wouldn't really call the dynamic range explosive, but simply okay. Of course, no microphone input test is complete without a noise measurement. I measured the so-called equivalent input noise, which lets you directly compare the preamp noise of the Air 192 to other interfaces. And this one exceeded my expectations. While the official specs state an EIN of minus 128 dBUA weighted, my particular unit measured minus 131.1 dBUA. Either M-Audio is slightly underrating the performance of the Air 192, or out of pure luck I just picked a golden sample. In any case, this means that the Air 192 even outperforms the incredibly low noise SSL2 from Solid State Logic and it is now the new king of the preamp performance. Here's how it compares audibly to some of these interfaces. And yes, this does mean you do not need a cloud lifter or fathead with this interface. Just out of pure curiosity, I connected a fathead to the air and the preamp noise got 0.5 decibels worse. Yes, you heard that correctly, with a fathead the noise performance gets worse than without one. So don't waste your money. There is another reason that you don't need a fathead or cloud lifter and that's that the air has tons of gain, around 52 decibels. This means that you can easily amplify even low sensitive dynamic mics unlike the Shure SM7B, which coincidentally you're listening to right now. I currently have the gain set to 95% and let me be quiet for a second so you can have a listen to the noise floor of this setup. That's an excellent performance of the M-Audio Air and this is very close to what is physically possible to achieve. Because of that, I think the label Crystal Preamp is absolutely warranted. I also measured the input impedance of the mic input, which shouldn't be too low as it otherwise can color your sound, and it comes in at 1.7 kilo ohm. This is arguably a bit on the lower side, but still nothing to worry about. While I was on it, I also checked the frequency response and distortion performance of the line level and instrument inputs on the M-Audio Air. As you can see, the line level and instrument input provide a very similar performance with a flat frequency response across the board. The response extends well above 20,000 Hz and in the audible range the performance is excellent. Here I'm flipping through some total harmonic distortion and intermodulation distortion measurements. In pretty every measurement the distortion components are around 100 decibels below the test signal, which is a very good distortion performance. So the instrument and line level input have a very good audio quality as well. Okay, enough about the inputs, let's talk about the audio quality coming out of the air. Well, this air. I measured the frequency response of the line level outputs and this is very flat even outside the audible range. There is just a negligible rise in the higher frequencies before it drops off with a minus 3 dB point at 85,000 Hz. Of course, I also checked the distortion and as you can see at the maximum output, the distortion components are about 80 decibels below the fundamental. That's arguably still very good, but I wouldn't want to see anything worse than that. The intermodulation measurements tell the same story. While not perfect, the main output on the M-Audio Air has a decent distortion performance. In my last video, I compared the headphone sound quality of many different audio interfaces and came up with a table which lets you compare the most important specifications of all the interfaces. I've made the exact same measurements with the M-Audio Air again and here you can see how it compares to the other interfaces. The specs are color coded so you can easily see how the M-Audio Air performs. It oftentimes scores a green rating and it only falls a bit short in the output impedance, channel balance and power department with high impedance loads. If you don't want your audio to be influenced by the relatively high output impedance of 10 ohms, I recommend you use headphones with around 80 ohms and above, but you also don't want to use very high impedance headphones as the air does not deliver enough power for them. 
My 150 ohm Sennheiser HD 58X worked perfectly well, but if you like to listen to very loud music, 300 and 600 ohm headphones probably won't get loud enough for you. So 80 to 150 ohm headphones seem to be the sweet spot. In all the other measurements, the headphone output performed very well, delivering a very good distortion and noise performance, which means that in practice you shouldn't encounter any noise or distortion with the M Audio Air. Round trip latency is the time for an interface to put out a signal and then record it again. This latency should be as low as possible to not perceive any delay when for example using the interface as an amp simulator. Here are the times I measured with the air with a sample rate of 192kHz and different buffer sizes. And here the same again, but this time with a sample rate of 48kHz. It is important to note that the combination of sample rate and buffer size heavily affects the latency and which combination you end up using depends on your specific PC and the project you are working on. Compared to other interfaces, I have to say that these latencies are very competitive. So what do I think of the AIR 192.4? I think it's a solid interface, both in terms of build and audio quality. The AIR features an ultra low noise preamp, the frequency response of the in and outputs is excellent, and the distortion performance is also very good. The dynamic range on the other hand could have been a bit better. Don't get me wrong, it isn't terrible by any means, it's just that competing interfaces are usually a bit better in this regard, and that's why I wished that the AIR would perform better as well. If you're looking for an interface with easy to access controls, an ultra low noise preamp and lots of gain to amplify your low sensitive dynamic microphones, then the AIR 192.4 might be the interface for you. Please give this video a thumbs up if this helped you out, and you can also support future videos on Patreon, link is in the description. Consider subscribing and I will see you all in the next one.